make sure you go over here and subscribe to my live stream channel. I'll be live streaming on a regular basis from December 19th, 2018. And there will be content on here which you will not find on my main channel. So all of you guys, make sure if you want to be up on my live streams, that you subscribe to this channel right here. It's called Hatman Boxing Live, The Objective Perspective. Go over and subscribe now, then enjoy the rest of this video. Tyson Fury claims to be the current lineal world heavyweight champion. And he uses this to try and sell himself as a more legitimate champion than either of the two current world heavyweight title belt holders, Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury says that he is the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man, going all the way back to the very first universally recognized world heavyweight champion, John L. Sullivan, over a hundred years ago. Now, I've made several videos in the past where I have disputed Tyson Fury's claims, but for those who didn't see those videos or need further clarification or explanation about what the lineal champion is and why I dispute Tyson Fury's claim to be the lineal champion going all the way back to John L. Sullivan, stay tuned because I'm going to explain it to you very, very clearly in detail in this video. Now, first of all, for the uninitiated, we need to establish what the lineal championship is. It's essentially an unbroken chain which links the current lineal champion back to previous champions. Okay, so for example, if we go from Floyd Patterson through to Lennox Lewis, we've got an unbroken chain. Floyd Patterson was defeated by Ingemar Johansson. Johansson then became lineal champion. Patterson defeated Johansson in the rematch. He was then beaten by Liston. He was then beaten by Muhammad Ali. He was then beaten by Joe Frazier. He was then beaten by George Foreman. He was then beaten by Muhammad Ali. He was then beaten by Leon Spinks. He was then beaten by Ali in a rematch. He was then beaten by Larry Holmes. He was then beaten by Michael Spinks. He was then beaten by Mike Tyson. He was then beaten by Buster Douglas. He was then beaten by Vander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, Vander Holyfield, again, Michael Mora, George Foreman, Shannon Briggs, Lennox Lewis, Hassin Ratman, Lennox Lewis. That is the lineage from Floyd Patterson through to Lennox Lewis of the lineal heavyweight title, okay? There is an unbroken link between Floyd Patterson and Lennox Lewis. The problem since Lennox Lewis, is that Lewis retired at the top. So what happens? Nobody beat Lennox Lewis after this point. He retired. So what happens to the lineage? Where does it go? How do you establish a new lineage? How do you decide who is the new lineal champion since Lewis retired as champion at the top? This is the question that people disagree over. Okay, now, in the past, for example, when Rocky Marciano retired at the top, he was undefeated. I cannot come up with a way, any kind of mental gymnastics or abstract concepts to link Floyd Patterson with the lineal championship of Rocky Marciano. I, I, I personally can't find any way of doing it. You see, some people say, okay, if a champion like Lennox Lewis retires at the top as lineal champion, when he retires, you give the lineal championship back to the last person who beat him. That's what you do. Well, who makes up these rules? You see, the lineal championship is a fictitious championship. It was made up by fans and a couple of sports writers. There is no overarching sanctioning body or organization or governing body which decides the rules of what happens in these situations. So it's left up to the fans to make it up as they go along. And that's literally what we have. We have fans making it up as they go along, 
who can't agree on what happens after a champion retires, where the lineal championship goes. On Wikipedia, for example, <clears throat> it says here that the lineal championship of a weight class is a world championship title held initially by an undisputed champion and subsequently by a fighter who defeats the reigning champion in a match at that weight class. So if you define it by Wiki Wikipedia's definition, that would mean, to my mind, that when, for example, Lennox Lewis retired, okay, in 2004, in order to establish a new lineage, you would need an undisputed champion. And that's where the new lineage would start. Based upon Wikipedia's explanation, that makes most sense to me. Now, here's the, here's the problem. We haven't had an undisputed champion since, since Lennox Lewis. Lewis was undisputed champion when he defeated Evander Holyfield in the rematch. He got stripped of titles after that, but you know, as it says in the Wikipedia explanation, it says here, there is no agreement upon method of determining the starting point for each lineage and conflicting opinions on what to do when the current champion retires or moves to a different weight class, although there is agreement that any stripping of a title be, dis be discounted. Excuse me. So Lewis being stripped of one or two of his titles prior to retiring didn't stop him from being lineal champion, okay? He continued being lineal champion. That's the whole point of the lineal championship. So... He was still lineal champion when he retired in 2004. How do you establish a new lineal champion? You have to have an undisputed. So basically, by that definition, we're still in a state of limbo without a lineal champion because we haven't had an undisputed to start a new lineage. Yeah, you with me? Now, there are other people who say no. <clears throat> when Lennox Lewis retired, what then happens is you retroactively go back in time and you give the lineage back to the previous lineal champion who held it and start a new lineage with them. Does that make sense? Let me, let me try to explain it with, uh, with BoxRec. All right, so let's go to Lennox Lewis on BoxRec. So Lewis retired a year after defeating Vitaly Klitschko as lineal champion. So some people say, right, we'll establish a new lineal championship by going back to the last person to defeat Lennox Lewis, which was Hasim Rackman, and giving him, retroactively give him the lineal title back. Even though he lost it to Lewis in the ring in the rematch, we'll retroactively, after the fact, go back and give Hasim Rackman the lineal championship back again <laughs> after Lewis retired in 2004. So essentially, from 2004, Hasim Rackman for the purposes of this lineage, was champion again. <laughs> All right, very tenuous, very suspect link, but that's essentially what people are doing. All right, so here. Now, Lewis retired in February 2004. So a retro retroactively going back to February 2004 and giving Hasim Ratman his lineal title back after the fact. Yeah, <laughs> very abstract, like I say, so we retroactively go back. We give Hasim Ratman his lineal championship back, even though he lost it to Lewis in the rematch. And we say here from 2004, all of these fights up until Hasim Ratman lost to Maskaev, all of these fights were actually fights for the lineal heavyweight title. That's what we're now saying. <laughs> so uh, Hasim Ratman versus Alfred Ice Cole. That was a lineal heavyweight title fight. So if Alfred Ice Cole had beat Ratman, he would have become lineal champion under this retroactive mental gymnastics lineal heavyweight championship system that some people are working with. So Cole could have been lineal champion. He fought for the lineal title. Mario Corley fought for the lineal title against Ratman. You see, Ratman wasn't even champion himself here. Ratman himself was fighting in 10 rounders here against journeyman opposition but retroactively, these now serve as lineal heavyweight championship fights. Rob Calloway, Terence Lewis, Carly Meehan, Monty Barrett. I mean, this was actually a, an interim heavyweight title fight. The draw with James Tony, and then eventually losing to Oleg Maskaev. 
okay, as lineal heavyweight champion, if we, we go back and give it to him retroactively again. So Maskaev, he then takes the lineal championship on retroactively. Are you with me? In 2006. Because he was the last person to defeat Lennox Lewis. So who beat Maskaev? So Maskaev, there you go, beat Rackman. He then loses to Sam Peter. We click on Sam Peter. After defeating Maskaev, there, he fights Vitaly Klitschko. Vitaly Klitschko beats him. And what do we have? Vitaly Klitschko is the lineal heavyweight champion. If you want to go that route <laughs> and try and retroactively go back and find the last person to beat Lennox Lewis, the last uh, lineal champion after 2004, because you see, there's another way you could do it. You could say the last lineal champion would be where are we at now? Oh, Maskaev. You could say the last lineal champion <clears throat> would be Hasim Ratman after he beat Lennox Lewis, if that makes sense. So Hasim Ratman beat Lennox Lewis in 2001, okay? So if we start the new lineage from there, you would have a different succession of champions. So in, in the method I just showed you, the lineal heavyweight champion would have been Vitaly Klitschko. Yeah? Because he beat the man who beat the man who was the last man to beat Lennox Lewis. But if you, but that's only if you start Hassim Ratman's lineage from the time Lewis retired. But if you start Hassim Ratman's lineage from the time he beat Lewis, it's going to be a different path. So from the time he beat Lewis, he then lost, uh, you know, he lost the rematch to Lewis. So, you know, Lewis took the lineal championship, but again, we're retroactively giving it back to Rackman. <laughs> How's that for mental gymnastics? Then he lost to Holyfield. Okay. So retroactively, he was lineal champion again, weirdly. Then we give the title to Holyfield because he beat Rackman. So then it follows Holyfield. So where are we at? Holyfield Rackman. Holyfield then loses to Chris Bird. Okay, so now retroactively, the lineal championship is with Chris Bird. <laughs> Even though Lewis was lineal champion at this time, he was universally recognized as lineal champion. We have to go back in time and change history and give Bird the lineal championship to make Tyson Fury's claim of being lineal champion going all the way to, back to John O'Sullivan. To make that work, this is what we have to do. So we give it to Chris Bird. And then... From Chris Bird, where are we at? Yeah, he beats Holyfield. Then he eventually loses to Klitschko in the rematch in 2006. Then Klitschko takes on the lineal championship. This is Vladimir this time. And then from Vladimir, we finally get a link to Tyson Fury. So that is the only way to link Tyson Fury to a lineal championship from Lennox Lewis on back. That's the only way to link him by doing some retroactive, abstract mental gymnastics. But if we're going to be sensible and if we're going to give the lineal championship any kind of legitimacy, in my mind, the best way to establish lineal champion is the way that Wikipedia suggested with an undisputed champion as the starting point. So if, if the last person to be undisputed champion retires, we need another undisputed champion. And from that point, we can start a new lineage. Because that's what you had with Floyd Patterson, by the way. You had an undisputed champion. After Rocky Marciano retired, Patterson became undisputed champion. A new lineage started. Okay, and that got over the problem of the line being broken by Marciano retiring. After Patterson, it was fine.
because you can trace back the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat the man all the way. You can trace that back. Yeah. For example, Muhammad Ali retired. Um, <clears throat> Muhammad Ali retired after the uh, Leon Spinks rematch. Then he came back to fight Larry Holmes. And at that point, Larry Holmes inherited Muhammad Ali's lineal title. Yeah. And then it went on all the way to Lennox Lewis. Nobody retired in the interim. Okay. As lineal champion and without coming back. So it gave an opportunity for people to beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. You understand? Pause. <laughs> But the only way, as I say, to link Tyson Fury to Lennox Lewis and beyond is by the very convoluted mental gymnastic using abstract concept method that I just showed you, which is absurd, isn't it? What credibility does that lineal championship have when it's got Hasim Rackman, <laughs> right, in, 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 in the, the method I showed you, as retroactive lineal champion when he's already lost the lineal championship to Lennox Lewis. Well, what credibility does something like that have? You can't say that it's the man who beat the man who beat the man in an unbroken line because Lewis beat the man. He beat Rick, uh, Rackman in the rematch and took the lineal championship back. You know, so you have to go back and do some crazy mental gymnastics to try and link Tyson Fury to, to Lennox Lewis. <laughs> but I guess maybe Fury fans have got, you know, Fury fans who back him up on his claim, maybe they've got some other way of working it out. I don't know, but that's the only way I can find of linking Tyson Fury to Lennox Lewis. And there's certainly no way of linking Tyson Fury all the way back to John L. Sullivan. That's ridiculous. <laughs> There's a very, very tenuous link from Tyson Fury back to Floyd Patterson, but that is so tenuous. All right. It, it, and again, there's no consensus um, set of rules for how to establish a lineal champion again. There's no consensus set of rules to what to do when a champion retires at the top. It's all just make it up as you go along and, you know, do as you please, basically. This is the issue with a lineal championship. This is the reason why actually being lineal champion in this day and age is less credible than being the champion of a, a sanctioning body. Because a lineal champion, he can retire for two and a half years or be inactive for two and a half years come back and still be called lineal champion when he ain't been fighting nobody and the other champions have been active. They've been taking on top contenders. They've been having real fights. But the guy who's lineal, you know, he doesn't have to fight any mandatories. He doesn't have to fight any contenders. As long as nobody beats him, he'll be lineal champion forever. But how does that make him more legitimate than the actual belt holders? And I'm not just talking about Tyson Fury here. I'm talking about any lineal champion. Adonis Stevenson, for example, you know, very unfortunate what's happened to Adonis Stevenson. But up until he lost to Alexander Wodzek, he was the lineal light heavyweight champion. Was he the more legitimate? Was he the most legitimate light heavyweight champion? Or was it Kovalev or Andre Ward? Was it even um, Alida Alvarez? You know, Stevenson was still the lineal. What, what does the lineal really mean? How credible is it really? I personally don't think the lineal in this day and age is all that credible. Back in the days when Floyd Patterson was lineal champion, I think it was more credible because back then there was fewer championship belts anyway. So it was easier to establish who was the lineal champion and therefore it had more credibility. But when there's multiple broken links in the chain all the way, when you know champions retiring and you're having to do mental gymnastics and retroactively go back and give people who lost the lineal championship, the lineal championship back, <laughs> it, 
it's just, come on, people. That is tenuous to say the least. So in, in, in my logical mind, my rational mind, I think, and this is just an opinion of mine, and we're, you know, nobody's opinion is the ultimate authority on this. But from a logical point of view, I think the best way to establish a new lineage is to have a new undisputed champion. And that just bolsters my desire to see an undisputed unification between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua and the winner face Tyson Fury. If that were to happen, then we could definitely say, okay, a new lineage starts now. The Klitschko era was a strange era because you had two brothers at the top. You can't blame them for not unifying and starting a new lineage from there. You know, you can't blame them for that. And you could try and do some mental gymnastics and say, okay, well, it was a joint lineage between Vladimir and Vitaly because there was a consensus view that those two were the best. But because they were brothers, you know, they didn't fight each other. So you could probably do try to do some mental gymnastics <laughs> and work with some abstract concepts to try and come, up, come out with a lineage that involves both Klitschko's. You know, somehow I'm sure somebody could try to do it. But anyway... Hopefully this has explained it. It might have muddied the waters even more, to be fair. But hopefully it's given some of you some clarification on what the lineal championship actually is and how legitimate or illegitimate Tyson Fury's claim to being lineal champion is at this point. Um, like I say, I would say at best, he's lineal champion going back to Vladimir Klitschko. You know, Klitschko when he started his 10 year or plus reign from 2006 on. Uh, in fact, did he lose after that? I can't remember now. When did let, me, let me go back and count exactly how many years it was <clears throat> that, Lennox, that uh, Vladimir Klitschko's reign lasted for. Okay, from 2015 all the way back to uh, where are we at? To Chris Bird. Okay, 2006. So it was. All right, a nine-year reign, basically, from 2015. So nine years. So yeah, you could say that Tyson Fury's lineage goes back nine years to the start of Klitschko's new reign, you know. Um, but why are we giving Klitschko the, 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 the new lineage when he had a brother? Do we give it to Vitaly or do we give it to Vladimir? <laughs> These are the issues. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's that when I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.